Hi, I'm Dr. Jemiah Tracy, veterinary neurologist, and I'm here to talk to you about canine epilepsy. This program is brought to you by KBrovat. Learn more at kbrovat.com. In the realm of seizure management for dogs with idiopathic epilepsy, potassium bromide stands as a well-established and trusted choice for long-term control. And at the forefront of the solution is Cabrovet CA1, a medication conditionally approved by the FDA for precisely this purpose. But what sets Cabrovet CA1 apart? And how does it work to decrease seizures? Let's delve into the science. Potassium bromide passes through channels along a nerve, creating a negative charge. This negative charge plays a crucial role in decreasing the chance of a seizure signal being sent to the next nerve. By doing so, potassium bromide effectively decreases the possibility that a dog experiences a seizure, providing a comprehensive and targeted approach to seizure control. CabroVet CA1 stands out as an excellent option for managing seizures, due to its impressive 21-day half-life in the bloodstream. This extended duration ensures that even if a dose is missed by the pet owner, the likelihood of significant fluctuations in drug concentration is minimized, thereby reducing the risk of seizures. This feature provides peace of mind for pet owners concerned about maintaining a consistent medication schedule. Additionally, Cabrovet CA1 proves to be an ideal choice for dogs with compromised liver function, since it does not rely heavily on hepatic processing. This distinguishes it from other anti-epileptic medications, like phenobarbital, making it a suitable option for canine patients with liver-related challenges. Delivered in a delectable chewable tablet to be administered only once a day, Cabrovet CA1 not only simplifies the treatment regimen, but also enhances owner compliance, providing a convenient and palatable option for pet owners. When it comes to seizure management, trust the science behind Cabrovet CA1. Want to learn more? Check out cabrovet.com. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I attended undergrad at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Then I went to veterinary school at The Ohio State University. Columbus, Ohio. From there, I did a rotating small animal medicine and surgery internship at Carolina Veterinary Specialists in Charlotte, North Carolina. And from there, my residency training was at North Florida Neurology, a private neurology practice in Jacksonville, Florida. As a veterinary neurologist, epilepsy is something that I treat daily at my practice. Therefore, it's important for you to know the ins and outs of how to treat them, how to recognize them, and what to do for these patients. Canine epilepsy, characterized by seizures or convulsions, presents a challenging neurologic puzzle for both pet owners and veterinary professionals. This multifaceted disorder involves paroxysmal disturbances in the cerebral forebrain region, resulting in abnormal electrical activity and overt signs known as seizures. In this exploration of canine epilepsy, we will delve into the intricacies of this condition, including causes, seizure types, diagnostics, and treatment. Canine seizures are intricate events characterized by sudden, abnormal electrical activity in the brain, resulting in a loss of consciousness or control over a specific muscle group. Identifying the root causes of seizures is paramount for effective management, with triggers ranging from metabolic disorders brain tumors, toxin ingestion, trauma, birth defects, and idiopathic epilepsy. Seizures in dogs manifest in different forms, each presenting distinct characteristics. Focal seizures affect specific muscle groups, with dogs typically remaining conscious. Absent seizures may involve staring off or zoning out, often accompanied by falling over or loss of consciousness. Generalized seizures or grand mal encompass full body convulsions with a loss of consciousness lasting anywhere between 30 seconds to three minutes. Understanding the three phases of a canine seizure is crucial for both pet owners and veterinarians. The pre-ictal phase 
may involve hiding or attention-seeking behavior, along with signs of worry or confusion. The ictal phase encompasses the seizure event, while the post-ictal phase may cause confusion, fatigue, aggression, loss of vision, and pacing, potentially lasting up to one week. Diagnosing the cause of seizures in dogs necessitates a comprehensive evaluation by veterinarians. This involves discussing the pet's general history, seizure frequency, and their appearance. Diagnostic tools may include general chemistry, complete blood count, urinalysis, and advanced procedures such as brain MRI and spinal tap for cerebral spinal fluid analysis. Let's take some time to talk about treatment for canine seizures. The treatment approach for canine seizures varies based on the underlying cause. Idiopathic epilepsy often involves the use of anti-seizure medications. Conditions like meningitis may require anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive medications, while brain tumors may necessitate surgical intervention, radiation therapy, or chemotherapy. Immediate toxin removal is crucial for toxin ingestion cases. Supportive care and blood thinners may be prescribed for strokes, and addressing specific diseases is essential for metabolic conditions. Managing canine epilepsy often involves a combination of medications tailored to the individual needs of each patient. The following medications are commonly used, each with its unique mechanism of action. Phenobarbital is a very common medication used for seizure management in canine patients. Its mechanism of action is as follows. As a barbiturate, phenobarbital enhances the activity of the neurotransmitter gamma aminobutyric acid, also known as GABA, resulting in a calming effect on the brain. To analyze dosing of phenobarbital, therapeutic blood levels are tested in order to ensure that the medication is within the optimal range for seizure control. Potassium bromide is an anti-seizure medication that can be used alone or in conjunction with phenobarbital to control seizures in patients. Its mechanism of action as a halide salt, it passes through neuronal chloride ion channels, hyperpolarizing neuronal membranes. This raises the seizure threshold and stabilizes neurons against excitatory input from epileptic foci. Potassium bromide has a long half-life and is given only once a day after reaching therapeutic levels. As you know, Compliance is key in managing any complex case through medication. Once a day administration is easier for some pet parents. Like phenobarbital, therapeutic blood level testing is employed to maintain an effective concentration of potassium bromide in the dog system. Levetiracetam is another anti-seizure medication typically used in seizure patients. Its mechanism of action is to modulate neurotransmitter release by binding to synaptic vesicle protein, SV2A, thus reducing neuronal hyperexcitability. While therapeutic blood level testing is less common for levetiracetam, regular veterinary checkups are essential to assess overall health. Zonesamide is yet another anti-seizure medication used in patients. Zonesamide primarily works by blocking sodium and calcium channels, thus stabilizing neuronal membranes and reducing excitability. Close veterinary monitoring is crucial to evaluate the medication's effectiveness and address any potential side effects. Topiramate modulates sodium channels, enhances GABA activity, and inhibits excitatory neurotransmitters, collectively contributing to its anti-epileptic effects. Veterinary supervision is necessary to adjust the medication based on the individual response of the patient. Once anti-seizure medication is initiated, it is typically a lifelong commitment. Consistency in administration is paramount to achieving optimal seizure control. In certain cases, a combination of medications known as combination therapy may be recommended. This approach aims to address seizures comprehensively by leveraging the strengths of different medications. Let's take a closer look at potassium bromide. Potassium bromide is a well-established medication in the management of seizures in canine patients, especially those with idiopathic epilepsy. This anti-epileptic drug plays a pivotal role 
and stabilizing nerve cell membranes and reducing the excitability of neurons, minimizing the occurrence of seizures. Cabrovet CA1, an FDA conditionally approved flavored chewable tablet containing potassium bromide is a valuable addition to the treatment arsenal. Typically administered orally, the efficacy of potassium bromide is closely monitored through therapeutic blood level testing. This ensures that the medication is at an optimal concentration in the dog's system to effectively control seizures. The dosage of potassium bromide is often weight dependent, emphasizing the importance of precise dosing. In certain cases, a combination of anti-seizure medications, including potassium bromide, may be necessary for effective seizure control. Once initiated, anti-seizure medication is generally prescribed for the rest of the dog's life. Long-term use requires regular veterinary checkups and adjustments to medication as needed. In addition to potassium bromide, phenobarbital stands out as a notable medication for controlling seizures in dogs. It is often prescribed for long-term use and requires careful monitoring to ensure therapeutic blood levels are maintained. A primary goal in treating epilepsy is achieving optimal seizure control. Optimal seizure control is defined as experiencing one seizure every two to three months or a 50% reduction in overall seizure frequency. Vigilant pet owners should seek veterinary attention in scenarios such as cluster seizures or status epilepticus, where injectable anti-seizure medication may be required. Pet owners can significantly contribute to the management of a canine epileptic patient by maintaining a seizure log. This log helps identify patterns, triggers, and potential factors influencing seizure occurrence. Record details such as the date, time, duration, nature of the event, and associated circumstances. Therapeutic blood level testing plays a pivotal role in the ongoing management of canine epilepsy. Regular testing ensures that the concentration of the medication in the dog system is within the therapeutic range, maximizing efficacy while minimizing potential side effects. For medications like phenobarbital and potassium bromide, these tests provide valuable insights for adjusting dosage as needed. Effective management of canine epilepsy requires a collaborative effort between pet owners and veterinary professionals. Open communication is essential for monitoring the pet's response to medication, addressing concerns, and making informed decisions about potential adjustments to the treatment plan. Keep in mind that any anti-seizure medication has possible side effects such as sedation, lethargy, difficulty walking, and these side effects must be balanced with seizure control. If you're having difficulty balancing seizure control and medication side effects, you may want to refer to a veterinary neurologist for help in these difficult cases. As we unlock the secrets of canine epilepsy treatment, a personalized and nuanced approach emerges. Medications like phenobarbital, potassium bromide, levetiracetam, zonisamide, and topiramate offer hope for seizure control with ongoing monitoring and therapeutic blood level testing guiding the way. The commitment to lifelong medication and the possibility of combination therapy underscore the importance of a collaborative journey towards enhancing the quality of life for our furry companions affected by epilepsy. So as we've discussed, management of seizure cases is different in every case. So I just wanted to give you a few examples of how I've managed seizure patients in the past that have all needed different therapies, but have had a good outcome at the end through conversation with the pet owners, the referring veterinarian, and me, the specialist. The first case is a pet that ended up being treated with potassium bromide only. Her name was Bella. She was a three-year-old female spayed Labrador retriever. Uh, she had a, her owner was a single mom. Uh, she had three kids. So I knew it would be difficult for her to give a medication that she had to give multiple times a day. Potassium bromide has a long half-life and is given only once a day after reaching therapeutic levels. As you know, compliance is key in managing any complex case through medication, and once a day administration is easier for some pet parents to manage. So I talked to her about potassium bromide, it's once a day administration, 
and the ability to keep up with that treatment in order to manage her seizures. So this is a good example of a case where you take the owner's life into example and help them manage their pet. This case is a great example of how you can tailor the treatment to the owner's ability to maintain compliance to help their pet. My second case is an older patient named Aki, who is an 11 year old male neutered Akita that develops seizures at the age of 11. This case sticks in my mind because typically older patients with seizures have an underlying cause such as a brain tumor or strokes causing the seizures. However, in this case, there was no obvious underlying cause for the seizures. MRI was normal, so Aki was diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy. He had to be treated with phenobarbital, and then he also had to be treated with potassium bromide as he continued to have breakthrough seizures on phenobarbital alone, despite increasing the doses through regular monitoring and adjusting based on his seizure frequency. With the combination of phenobarbital and potassium bromide, we were able to get Aki seizures ultimately under control. Finally, I have an example of multiple medication therapy being needed to manage a patient's seizures. His name is Darcy. He's a four-year-old male neutered beagle, and he was diagnosed with idiopathic epilepsy. Treatment was started with phenobarbital. Levels were monitored. His dose was increased, and he continued to have breakthrough seizures, which does tend to happen. The owner called and brought him in multiple times to be evaluated. Then we added levetiracetam as a second seizure control. That in combination with phenobarbital helped to decrease his seizure frequency, but not quite to the levels that we were aiming for. So in this case, we had to add a third medication, which happened to be zonisamide in this case. Through the combination of those three medications, we were able to get his seizures under control. So this is an example of multiple medications and cooperation with the owner being needed to help their pet. Effectively managing seizures in dogs is an art as each pet responds uniquely to various medications. Open communication and collaboration between veterinarians and pet owners are key. Sharing experiences and insights contribute to a collective understanding of this complex neurological condition, ultimately enhancing the quality of life for dogs affected by epilepsy and their owners. And that'll be all for the talk on canine epilepsy. Thank you so much for watching. Want to keep up with everything VetMed? Follow us at MyVetCandy.